Hallelujah. If he can tell a lie on you, see, the Lord didn't tell a lie on Job. He's God, he can't lie. He said, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. None like him. What did he say about him? He said he's a perfect an upright man and one that fears uh, uh, God and assureth evil. Leaves it out of his life. Hallelujah. You know what he done? Job felt something coming. So he went down and he offered a sacrifice for his own children because he said maybe they've cursed God. Maybe they're in bad shape. He felt like something was going to happen. Well, what happened? Of course, you all know how they all died. Every one of his children died. Hallelujah. And, and, and all they had, everything that he had was gone. One morning he woke up sitting in ashes with an oil with pottery, scraping the sword that he had on his body. Hallelujah. didn't have nothing. Why? Because God took down the hedge. Let me tell you all something. There's people that can take your dollar bill out of your pocket they can take your money out of your checking account they can take your money out hallelujah out of your pocket and laugh at you all the time they're doing it yeah. but but the balls they don't do that honey you're talking to the wrong man hallelujah satan will absolutely rob you and put you behind an eight ball, hallelujah, and leave you stranded. <coughs> you say, oh, but Bill Walsh, hallelujah. Let me, let me tell you what happened. I'm just going to tell you a little bit. One night I received a call. Credit card company called me and said, We're going to tie your checking account up. I said, well, I'm going to the credit card. I don't know about nothing. Yes, you owe $7,800. I'm telling you, I'm just doing, I'm going to wake up a little bit here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You will send the $800. We either have $2,500 out of your checking account tonight or we tie your checking account up tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, I don't owe you all nothing. I don't have, I don't, I have a credit card, but I don't owe you, I don't owe you nothing. I haven't bought nothing on my credit card. Hallelujah. But listen, listen to what I'm saying. Satan knows exactly how to move. He knows how to take your integrity. He knows how to blow you out of the water. But oh, but the walls. There were people that were millionaires, had millions of dollars in, the, in their bank. There were some of these shrewd investors. Hallelujah. And took what they had. And they got up in the morning. They didn't even have enough to pay their taxes on their homes. They didn't have nothing. They were flat broke. The old fat cat, he's sitting up there in prison. Probably spend the rest of his life there. But he knows probably where all their money's at. They might have got some of it back, but they won't get all of it back. He owned all kinds of yachts. He owned all kinds of everything else. Hallelujah. But all oh, but Brother Walt, I'm smarter than that. Let me tell you something. These were businessmen. They were smart men. Hallelujah. But there was one that belonged to the devil that was smarter than they were. And believe you me, he took them apart. Hallelujah. A lot of them took a gun, took their head and pulled the trigger because they couldn't stand it. You think Satan ain't going to work? Yes, Let me ask you a question. What would you do? 
what would you do? Kofi back there. He doesn't want you to school tomorrow. Another little girl over here. They want you to school tomorrow. They loved. See, the families love these children. But the telephone rang and said, you better come get your children. And he went there. They was, you couldn't find them because some love had taken their lives and shot them. Taken their little girls and run off with them and raped them and killed them and left them out there in some words in a shallow grave to the violence of the world. Hallelujah. Oh, but now, brother, well, that won't happen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. The only way you're going to be protected is by the Holy Ghost of God. We are in the last days. Hallelujah. And here's the bad part about it. It don't always get out of the house. Sometimes it's right in the house with the mothers and fathers that do these things. Wake up, folks. We're living in perilous times. We're living in a time like we never saw. That's right. What are you saying? I'm saying, hey, if you're going to serve the Lord, you better get in with all your heart. And this thing didn't match Brother Walls all the time. Running off and saying, I don't think I'll go back out to midway to Brother Walls. He got to where he ain't got no sense. Honey, I've just got a little sense now. And I'm about to lose all the sense I got. Hallelujah. I played with the devil about all I'm going to play with him. I don't care if you get mad. I'm going to preach it to you. And when I stand before God, God's going to say, well done. Amen. Amen. time we took our stand. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Brother Walt, you know somebody might walk through that door and shoot you right between the eyes. They couldn't shoot nobody's head. I like any better than do mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. If they shoot this old coconut, I want you to know that I'm going to wake up in heaven Amen. with a brand new and good Hallelujah, good morning. I want you to know that I've lived for God and I serve the Lord and the devil don't have anything, no charm on me whatsoever. I don't want nothing to do with that rascal. Amen. Hallelujah. You know where? Here's two places you can get people with. I've done quite a bit of them. The pocketbook and the family. Hallelujah. You see, did you know that's what he hit Job with? He hit Job. The first thing he done was took all that he had. His sheep, his camels, his everything he had, he took him. That was his finance. The next thing he done was took his family. Now listen where the next thing comes. He hit Job then. And when he hit Job, he hit him with boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Hallelujah. And he sat in ashes. There ain't nothing could hurt you any worse than sitting in ashes, scratching boils, risings on your body with, with part of your old broken pipe. You say, oh, but the walls. Or is it ever going to hit you? Let, 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 let me tell you something. The devil could have not hit Junior Larkins with anything in his life that's any worse than him being sick. You know why? Because he's like Brother Walsh. He's used to being on the go. He's used to taking care of his business. He's been used to hallelujah working and doing what he needs to do. But what did the devil do? The devil hits him with everything that he can. Hallelujah. Virgil back there was sitting, I think, in West Frankfurt, I believe it was Illinois. And, and one morning, and he was a mine inspector. And he was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I, I, uh, the, I don't even know what they told me. Hallelujah. But he had an aneurysm. You know what? It was, it was fight. He was alive for several several weeks. I wasn't here at the time, but people called and told me. Hallelujah, we prayed for him over and over and over. He couldn't, the devil couldn't hit him with anything any harder than that. He, what did he do? What's the devil doing? 
he's taking your, he'll take you, your life and fix you to dying back there. The devil couldn't hit nobody with anything that hurt any worse than her sickness. Hallelujah. But, oh, but Brother Wallace, see, she don't want to be sick any more than anybody else does. No. But she sees Satan, he didn't look at, hallelujah, who's sick and who ain't. He just looked at them he can cause to be sick. And I want you to know that foul devil will do that to you or me or anybody else. He don't care about you. Why do you want to even serve him? Why do you want to give up and say, devil, I hear I am? You need to say, I resist the devil. And he's got to free from me because God's word, hallelujah, said he had to go. He's got to go. <coughs> we could be. Hallelujah. You be strong in faith. Do you think the devil won't weaken you? Hallelujah. You think he won't do everything he can to weaken you? Satan don't want you to. Hallelujah. What's he do? He takes everything you've got to bring you down because you need to be afflicted. I'm not going to preach on that, but I'm going to bring, I want to show you the other side of the coin. There's a head and there's a tail on every coin. Hallelujah. One day, Job's friends came to see him. He was sitting out there and they didn't even know him. He didn't look like that man that used to be dressed and lived. And <coughs> but they ran out there and here was sitting Job, boils from his head to his toes. And here come Job's wife out there. She got tart food with him. Hallelujah. Most people would say, I'm sending you to the nursing home, Job. Hallelujah. But that ain't what, that ain't what she said. She went out there and said, why don't you just curse God and die? <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. He had a mouthful when he got, he had about all of her he was going to put up with. Now, what are you talking about? This is the way he said. He said, listen, woman, I come into this world naked, and I'm going out of this world naked. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord in all of this. Yes. Job sin not, neither charge God foolishly. Because God had taken down the hedge, he still loved God. You know what God done when he saw he loved him? He turned around and doubled everything that Job had. God turned around and doubled it because Job didn't give up. I was going to give up, Brother Walter. Everything ain't going to suit me. Everything ain't going to suit me. Let me tell you something. Don't expect God to bless you if you don't bless the Lord. You come to church and you sit here with your hands folded. <laughs> God has to wake up for you, bless you. But anyway, listen to what I'm saying. Job, hallelujah, was an example to you and I today. We're going to have troubles and we're going to have trials. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you all something. When you stand for God, Shadrach and Beshach and Abednego in the fifth chapter. Yeah. Hallelujah. Of Daniel. Whenever he said you bow down and you worship. Hallelujah. My God. They said, oh, uh, King, we ain't careful to answer you. We're not going to worship your God. You know what they done? They took him and throwed him in the fire furnace. But you know what they done? Hallelujah. They just went over there and glory to God. I guess they thought they had air conditioner down there. Praise the Lord. Listen to what I'm saying. Satan can only do what he wants to do. See, the difference in Job and the three Hebrew children, God took the hedge down for Job, but he kept that hedge high and mighty, hallelujah, and when they were thrown in the fire furnace, they didn't smell any smoke on their clothes, and they wouldn't have hair on their head singed, but brother, they come out of there, hallelujah, made hold by the power of God, 
whenever they throw Daniel into the lion's den. Hallelujah. I want you to know the hedge wasn't took down away from him. And you know what happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. He walked out of there. Mm, hallelujah. May hope. And they throwed some of them and throwed them in there. And the bones, they them lions crushed the bones. They were hungry. They just hadn't run into the hedge yet. This is what the Bible said. You're not the Holy Spirit whereby you're sealed unto the day of your redemption. You better know you've got, you're covered by the blood. You better know the Holy Ghost has got that hedge built around you. Because you're going to come in contact with him. You're going to come in contact. I don't care where you go. You're going to come in contact with him. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you all something. If it's anything I despise to deal with is a sanctified hypocrite. They're better than anybody else around. I was sitting, I think I told you all that here before. I was sitting in Walmarts and <clears throat> Wilma was shopping and I, I always just sit down. I don't have much to buy. Hallelujah, she won't give me but a couple of dollars and I can't buy much of that. But anyway, hallelujah, I was sitting, I was sitting there on a bench. Here come this sanctified hypocrite. Oh, he was so sanctified. When he found out I was a preacher, that boy almost went to heaven before I could get him stopped. But anyway, hallelujah, it wasn't but a minute. Uh, after, uh, here come another guy out and this man, and he jumped up and started cussing and talking to this man, all kind of dirty thing to hallelujah. And I just looked around at, at him and I thought within myself, you ain't nothing but a sanctified hypocrite. You got about as much sanctification as a dog we got home. How to do it? Probably got more sins than that dog cut fleece. <laughs> <laughs> but brother Box, hey, I believe God can keep us. Yep. I believe I can say like Paul. I'm persuaded that neither height nor depth, powers or principality, things seen or unseen, is able to separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. You know what we do? We just say, well, that's all right. I don't have to live for God. Nobody knows that I claim to be a Christian. Claiming to be and being is two different things. If you claim to be, everybody knows that. <laughs> Hallelujah. We run over a skunk. Going home here a while back. Sister Wilma was driving. It's quick she run over that skunk. I didn't say, I didn't say, Sister Wilma, did you say that old possum you run over? I didn't say, did you run over, did you run over a dog? Hallelujah. I know there was a skunk because he stunk. That's the way God is about your sins when you got them in your life. You may think you got them covered up, but I want you to know they stink just like the skunk. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Amen. You ain't going to get back with him. That's right. No. You're not getting back with him. He'll come back. Be sure your sin will find you out. God will take down the hedge. But the man that he took down the hedge for stood the test. Think about it. How would you... You know, my... my I have a bad back, and hallelujah, and sometimes God will touch it. I, I, I haven't had any back problems since Sister Wilma prayed for me, and, and I got up this morning, my back was sore and hurting, and, and I couldn't, I, every time I coughed, it felt like I was going to bust open. Praise the Lord. I don't think I'm that bad, but anyway, hallelujah, listen to what I'm saying. We cannot just give up and say, well, it's you know, the devil, he's, he's been after me all day. Bless his sweet name. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The devil ain't been after me all day. Bless his sweet name. And he's not going to be after me all day tomorrow. Bless his sweet name. Hallelujah. Because I want you to know the name of Jesus. That sweet name we're talking about is what drives him back to me. Right. Amen. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. Men run in under safety. That's where you find your shelter. Whatever the devil starts on you, instead of getting in tune with him, hallelujah, instead of getting in tune with the devil, tell him to shut up and get out of the way that you're on your way to heaven and you ain't got time to fool with 